on the VC3 News update, senior officials of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment ordered to quarantine for five days out of an abundance of caution. SVG records 49 active COVID-19 cases, with 28 regarded as part of local clusters. And two health workers amongst locals who have tested positive for COVID-19. And in your local sports, the NLA Premier and First Division's Cricket Championships to begin on January 16th. Regionally, Chris Gale headlines a plethora of West Indies stars, confirmed for next weekend's draft of the Pakistan Super League. Join us at 7pm for these stories and more on the VC3 News Update. This week's edition of the Roundtable Talk. It's the first edition for the year 2021. When we left last year, there was no super volcano that was active. But here we are at the stage. We're managing two emergencies in St. Vincent at the same time. In the studio to talk about what's happening at La Soufre Volcano, we have with us Professor Richard Robertson from the UWI Seismic Research Center. He's also the head of the scientific team that is here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We also have with us Director of NEMO, Miss Michelle Forbes. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Good it's good to have you. Uh, Richie, I want to start from the beginning and I'd like you to give us a kind of chronological account of uh, what has transpired so far okay. in respect of the volcano. Yeah. Um, well, I guess to a large extent, activity related to the volcano began sometime in November when we had some slight increase in earthquake activity. Nothing sort of totally unusual at Sufre because every now and then, since it's erupted in 79, Sufre has had periods when you've had some slight increase in seismic activity. But it was sufficient for us to be reaching out to um, Nimue and telling them that, you know, get a heads up. Um, so we were, of course, we were affected in terms of the network by the impact of coal and we couldn't put boots on the ground. So some stations, our, our station network was not up, optimum really. Um, but the first sign that we had that something was really happening and what sort of up the ante further is that um, the, we, we got indication that there was a hot spot over the volcano. Um, and this is from a NASA, NASA firm's um, satellite. Basically, NASA has these satellites that orbit the Earth, and they really look for hotspots, mainly to do forest fires. And one of the members of staff at, at Seismic who, who, who monitors, in fact, based in Monstrad, uh, Dr. Adam Stinton, who monitors satellite um, feed, he got an alert, because he's on alert, that there was a, uh, an indication that there was a hotspot over the Sufre. It could have been a forest fire, it could have been anything. Um, but it was sufficient that we thought that we needed to go and see, um, and it, it, a team here we discussed with Nemo and with the Super Monitoring Unit, who's on a Nemo, to, to get a team up there. Um, and by the time they got, by, by the time, you know, and, and for various reasons, we didn't at that time sort of, you know, realize what was happening. But the hotspot got from one to sort of, it, it sort of began to, to grow. It sort of, you have one or more places. So that by the time they got up there, I think it was, on, was it Monday or Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, they basically verified that there was, a, a growth, a, a, a small mound that was next to the pre-existing 1979 dome. And immediately we saw the pictures we knew what was happening, that there was clearly an effusive eruption on the way. We contacted Nemo. I think I, I, I called uh, Miss Forbes almost immediately and told her, well, from the pictures I see, there's no question. There's an eruption on the way. Um, it looked like it was effusive, given the pictures that we saw. There was a mass of rock. Um, it was steaming. It was sort of on the western side of the of the um, of the pre-existing dome. And from then, basically, things just picked up. We we mobilized a team to get here as quickly as possible. We started to monitor the volcano more closely, take lots of pictures, video, and from that, we were able to track the development of the dome. So, for example, in the first day or two, the first set of photographs indicated it was, it was growing at a particular rate. 
the rate slightly increased, and uh, the last, the last, the, in the last advisory, we indicated that the rate seemed to have gone back closer to what it was at the beginning. Um, so the dome is growing. It is going to. We expect it to grow at different rates. It's not unusual. It might speed, speed up, might um, slow down. Um, it's growing confined within an open crater. That's sort of a good thing because domes are really masses of hot rock, which are inherently unstable. And the domes themselves fail, so even by them just doing and do, growing and nothing else, they do pose a danger if it was unconfined. But because it's confined in this crater, this huge crater that we have, um, it's the, the dangers from the dome, associated dome growth, is confined to the crater and the surrounding areas. Um, and the dangers come from the fact that you have a lot of gas that's being emitted. And as the dome grows, as it gets unstable, the edges sort of break up. And when the edges break up, they expose fresh uh, magma inside under the surface that is hotter, that has a more gas, and therefore that sort of creates a little flow that's quite hot. And in those areas where it's sort of failing slightly on the edges, it will pose a danger if you are close to it, basically. Um, so that's why the, the recommendation is that people shouldn't go to the crater and they said, because they will put in themselves at harm way. Um, so we continue to monitor it. We have put in stations. We have augmented the monitoring network and over the next um, a week or so, I think by middle of next week, late next week, we probably would be in a much more comfortable position in terms of where we would like the monitoring to be. Um, and we certainly have, have we, we will certainly have staff here. I mean, I, I came as a member of, of a three-man team, two of them being technical people who are putting in instruments. We keep that close monitoring going. We are currently now, I believe, we're getting daily briefing, daily advisories. We have several um, organized through NEMO. We have several overflights. So we keep in, basically, we keep on a very close eye on the volcano, and that's necessary. Um, it's necessary for two main, well, for several reasons. One is that we want to see, we want to monitor the rate at which it's growing. That's important because even though it's a big open crater, there's a certain amount of space that it has to fill up, therefore, before it starts sort of getting outside the crater, because we want to see if it's going to spill over, because if it's, it, it, as it grows, it could potentially spill over. And if it spills over, some of those same material that, is, that, that breaks off, they can go down the mountainside and they could cause harm to down the valleys that it's spilling into. Um, so we want to monitor the growth. We want to see where it's growing, both the rate and where exactly it's growing, to look at whether it has a chance of compromising again outside the crater. And the other thing we want to do is get in a position where we could tell if it gives any indication that it's going from effusive dome growth, which is where the, where the harm is confined to a particular area, mm -hmm. to possibly some, some sort of explosive activity. Um, and, and just to finally say that, you know, Soufre is known from years to have two kinds of eruptions, explosive and effusive, and, and we're monitoring for that. Explain to us what is the difference between both types of eruptions. Right, okay, so what people would have seen by now, I, th I think people are probably well versed in what an effusive eruption is, because essentially an effusive eruption is the emission of magma or, or molten material that becomes solid, and, and, and we, call, we then call it lava, um, that is extruded onto the surface of the Earth very slowly. It usually moves like that because it's, it doesn't have a lot of gas in it, because gas is what, to a large extent, drives whether volcanoes are explosive or not. Um, in the case of our kind of volcano, um, it doesn't flow very fast because our magma is very sticky. So an effusive eruption that people, everybody know about is Hawaii. Hawaii, those nice long runny lavas, that's an effusive eruption. But the Hawaiian lav magmas are much more runny. The con composition is different. They're not so sticky like ours. Our, our rocks are very, what I call, they're very viscous. That's the correct term. So, they don't move very fast, and because they do that, when they when they when they squeezed out like a uh, squeezing out a tube of toothpaste, eh? when they get squeezed out, they don't run like the toothpaste. They're sort of more sticky, so they get blocky. So as soon as a little bit comes out, it becomes solid, and it sort of stops moving until the other piece comes out and pushes that aside. So if you look at the dome, if you look closely, you may see it. It looks like it has lots of little ridges. It sort of it has rectangular blocks almost as disjointed. So that's typical of an effusive eruption, quiet emission of magma onto the surface. Explosive is when often you have a lot of gas and the, the, the way in which the gas comes out very fast, it, it breaks the rock apart and it explodes the rocks, fragments things and throw things up in the air. And the 1979 eruption, 1902 eruption were explosive eruptions. 
while the 1971-72 eruption was an effusive eruption. I, I think in the context of people, you could think that an effusive eruption is probably more welcome than an explosive eruption. Effusive eruption, the hazards are more confined to the crater and summit areas, while an explosive eruption has impact wider field. Okay, well, Michelle here. Michelle, what has NEMA been doing since the uh, news broke of this uh, eruption of Lassofer volcano? Well, from the time we, were, we have been monitoring it since November, as um, Dr. Robertson said, and during that time we basically started reviewing our plans. Um, we would alert our permanent secretary and, and uh, chairman of the National Emergency Council with the planning for the worst, as you would say. So since then we have really been having our crisis communication plan or strategy rolling out, ensuring that we have the information to the general public because people are hungry for information and we have to avoid some of the misinformation that we have also. Contacting the communities, especially in the red zone and the orange zone, because these are the two particular zones, um, red zone meaning from Fancy to Georgetown and the orange zone just um, basically just above um, Belle Isle northwards to Chatterbelle, Fitzhugh's Richmond area. So alerting the communities, meeting with the communities and discussing some of the plans we have had over the years. And coincidentally, we actually tested the National Level Okina okay, Plan in 2019. So it put us in a position for us to now review what happened in 2019, look at the points, um, rendezvous points, the meeting points that we have to evacuate um, in an instance, and really just review the plan with, with the hope of if, it, if we have to go into full activation, that is quite oiled. So we have been doing a lot of um, sensitization of social media in the community, meeting with other um, ministries and departments because it's a, it's a coordinated effort and ensuring that we are all ready um, for any eventuality. It is a SVG volcano already and I use, I, I use that deliberately because I know last year you were involved in a series of activities under a project called SVG Volcano okay, ready. ready Project. Mm. How ready are we? We have been getting ready for quite some time, I, and uh, a number of years, I think, probably over 10, 15 years, because we know we are living with this particular risk. We know that what can happen at last so it can be doing nothing much now to be in quite a, a, a full eruption within a, sh a very short space of time. So basically, we, our focus has been a lot on the whole volcano already, getting the communities, especially closer to the volcano already, and also preparing those communities further down, which are generally the safe areas for persons to evacuate to. So the communities are pretty, they, they pretty much have a lot of information over the years because we have been working with them for quite some time. So the communities are ready. We, had, we have already had community engagements. They're ready and willing. They have been doing their own internal work. And we at the National Organization have been crying, have been working our way to the readiness for quite some time because I say we are living with this monster, we're living with this risk, and we have to be ready for, for any um, change in its status at this time. Okay, when we come back, we will talk a little bit about the various um, alert levels mm -hmm. and what they mean, etc. And we'd also want to talk, uh, Richie, about the history of La Souffre mm -hmm. and, and really, really, what are the projections. We'll be back in just a moment. Fire, 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 fire. and dice. 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 Together, on one scratch ticket, can make your dreams come true. Yes, yes, yes it's yes. fire and dice. Dice, dice, dice. The new $10 scratch game with thousands of dollars to be won. One, one, Match one, one, your numbers with any of the winning numbers and win the prize shown up to $125,000. You can double or triple your prize with fire and dice. dice, dice, dice. Available from all lotto agents and runners. There's cash to catch with just a scratch. scratch, scratch, scratch. On the VC3 News update, senior officials of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment ordered to quarantine for five days out of an abundance of caution. SVG records 49 active COVID-19 cases, with 28 regarded as part of local clusters. And two health workers amongst locals who have tested positive for COVID-19. And in your local sports, the NLA Premier and First Division's Cricket Championships to begin on January 16. Regionally, Chris Gale headlines a plethora of West Indies stars, confirmed for next weekend's draft of the Pakistan Super League. Join us at 7pm for these stories and more on the VC3 News Update. <laughs> 
Welcome back and just a reminder that you can interact by sending your questions, comments, queries to our Facebook page. You can also interact on YouTube and um, we'll be happy to respond. We are at orange alert at the moment. What does that mean? And, and describe for us the various stages of, of the alert system. So there are four stages of the alert system and, and we are currently at the orange stage which means it's highly elevated which we have an effusive eruption ongoing there's steam there's materials magma coming up to the surface and um, forming the when coal become these hard rocks so we have ongoing eruption effusive eruption at the nasu Freire volcano it means that it's a constant state of, state of eruption and it can either increase um, remain effusive or it can go explosive there's a poss there's that um, possibility so during this phase um, we increase the monitoring system we have already installed a network at wallabo station network at um at georgetown and we've been in um, which any team will be installing several other stations around the volcano to really give us more information and data what is happening um, measure the ground deformation and other things and we coordinate um, daily with the with the scientist team here on the ground to really get a feel of what they're doing and what they're seeing um, to really inform us and inform the population we will we have upped our communications we have upped our public education and regular visits to the radio station. We're in a COVID environment. We still visit in the communities because in a volcanic crisis, the, um, the persons, especially in the red zone, need to really hear from us and exactly to know exactly what we do. So we, we're doing all of this um, within this whole orange phase or the orange alert. The other phase, of course, we have is the green, which is norm the normal phase we have had over the years. It is quiet. It doesn't mean that it's not doing anything. It's quiet, there's very little activity, not unusual activity um, observed. So it's normal monitoring, a normal day-to-day -day process as we have been having um, over the last few years. The yellow phase, it's maybe given a little few more earthquakes than normal. It's becoming a little restless. Um, if you note, we went to straight to, from the green to the orange because, of course, we had effusive eruptions when we did the inspection or the site visit, the visual monitoring. So we went straight to the orange phase, but in the yellow, it will indicate, okay, it's getting a little bit more restless, a bit more earthquakes happening, and indicating that you know, the activities have increased. Bearing in mind, for this leading up to this particular effusive eruption, the maximum number of earthquakes we would have had per day was about was around 11. And in 1979, we would have had hundreds daily. So it's really, I wasn't at that stage where we needed to really re um, raise the alert level. Then again, in the yellow phase, we still look at the monitoring system. We start our activities, review our plans, and look at the vulnerable populations that we may have to move in, in the event of an of a evacuation. And in the red phase now, which means that eruption is in progress, or the scientists have, have indicated that they may occur based on the scientific um, evidence that they have, um, they have um, analyzed, analyzed. And then is when we actually would give the evacuation order at some point in, in, the, red, in the red zone to really ask persons to evacuate from the area because the, it's a probable threat that the volcano is going to go, um, erupt explosively and they will be in harm's way and they need to evacuate and we need to take them to a safer area. So these are really the four alert levels okay. of the volcano. So, so, so we, have, we, we have a couple of questions. First, someone wants to know what is the approximate growth rate of the dome? Mm -hmm. Right. And take so, them on top that yeah, I, I'm going to do them now because mm -hmm. I, I think they will be coming in fast, fast mm -hmm. and furious. Yep. Somebody also wants to know why was the country not informed before we got to the orange alert, mm -hmm. um, which is the third, second to last alert mm -hmm. stage. Um, would the live webcam be available to the public for viewing? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's another question. And, um, okay. So I think that's it for now. 
Okay, you want me to have a go at some of them? Yes. Yeah. Right, the growth rates um, move from, uh, I don't have the exact figures in my mind, and that doesn't really matter because there's a lot of error in the estimates that we're doing currently, simply because of the way in which we're doing it. We, we don't have enough camera footage from the same positions to do it. So we're doing the best we can, but the rate started at about one and a half cubic meters per second. It went up to about two, the maximum it went up to, I think it was about 2.6, 2.7. And the last report that, that we would have sent out said it went back down to about 1.5. So the rate goes up and down. Um, and I think the little fridge that people, I, I tried to make the analogy that the little fridge that you have, often like the little office fridge with two compartments, that's about a cubic meter, that's a, that's a, that's a cubic meter fridge. So it's, it's, it's kind of right now growing at the rate of about one, or, one and a half of those per second. Sounds very high to most people, but in the context of domes and the context even of souffre, it, it can get up to 10 and 12. The Sufra in 71, 72 went up higher than that and in 79. And then Montserrat has done that. So that's the rate of growth. Um, the next question you asked about the live webcam. Um, I guess there's a number of issues with that and, and I guess it's something that we're looking at. Um, the, 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 the webcams that we have put, certainly in Belmont, if we make it live, it means that there's a certain resource capacity that it requires. It will, require to, it will require Nemo and us to have the internet bandwidth to deal with the fact that several hundred people log on to it. We're not in the state. Give The critical thing that we do now is trying to make sure we have enough information to the scientific group to advise Nemo. We're trying at the same time to get as much information out. We have a whole team of you know, people, both at Nemo and at Seismic, pushing information out. We won't be able to give everything that people want. Maybe later on, we might do the webcam because we would have been able to sort out the internet issues and stuff like that. In fact, one of the things that we're looking at is the webcam, one of the webcams at Belmont. If you want to see it, you have to log into the webcam at Belmont. One of the things that we'll do is trying to mirror it somewhere else so that the webcam still runs and we just mirror the, the image somewhere else that could deal with the bandwidth. So those kinds of issues. People are asking about the webcam on the, on the, on the, if, the if we put a camera on the rim, again, it's the same thing. To get a, a signal from the rim, to where people want to see it. It, it has some resource implications um, that we have to deal with. And that may not, dealing with that, in other words, getting the public to see the image of the volcano live is less critical than getting instruments in the volcano. So it's a matter of resource and thing. So it may happen, but it's not a critical thing right now. Do you see a benefit to that? Um, well, I don't know, people seem to, to, to think. For us, it's a benefit because it gives us scientific information. Yes. You have to, have to ask the public who asked in that was the benefit to them. We, we, we're going to share some video today that we did yeah, on the summit. Definitely. And we're going to share, as much as we have information, we share that. Yeah. It might not be live, but it's what we're seeing. And the third thing, which I'll, I'll probably get Michelle out a little bit of the hot seat by explaining. The alert level system is designed to help us all respond to the volcano in a certain way. It's not going to be perfect. It's a work in progress. We respond as necessary. The volcano went from giving us very little signals to actually <laughs> virtually erupt in on us. Okay. It's not something ideal, but it happens. For some reason, it happened at, at Sufra. We're still trying to figure out how the mechanism is trying to model it. If that happens, the response is really what they did to go to yellow, not, not go to green. You know, you need to respond, and the response is that up the ante to yellow immediately. Um, the reason we didn't is because the signals were that you were at green. It wasn't necessary to go to yellow. And, and in fact, it went from green so if you want to say it went to yellow, it went so fast that by the time it did, it was already on, on thing. So it's a work in progress. I think the way in which you respond is as rapidly as you can to what is happening, get as much signal in as possible, as much data in as possible, analyze it and provide the advice to the authorities. And I think, I mean, you know, others will come and, and give the prognosis, but I think we're not doing that bad in that regard. I mean, we, we're still struggling, but we, we'll, we're working at it. Make sure people get the information they need. Make sure the scientists get the information they need to give the advice. And we're at the same time trying to push the information out. Yes. I mean, as you know, in this day and age, you know, instant mm -hmm. information, people are never going to be satisfied. Somebody was asking the height of the dome. The height of the dome, I, I don't, I think it's, it's I, I, I don't know okay. if we actually have a height. I think we have a volume. Yeah, so, so th that's what the rate is based on, the <coughs> volume. The, as I said, we will need to get some web, some cameras, not so mm -hmm. much web cameras. Cameras we put on the summit will be sort of high-quality cameras at different angles to get different, and we would get that. 
Also, we'll have to go and get some more satellite imagery and some more data to actually know the exact height. I would estimate when I was there last time, it's probably getting too close to sort of a little below the half the height of the pre-existing dome. That's kind of, you know, it's probably less than that, but, you know, I was just looking at it eyeballing it. I haven't done any measurements. So the answer is that we don't know exactly the height. We have an estimate of the volume, but we're working on all of those parameters as, as I speak, virtually. Before we take the next break, I want to ask <coughs> a question that a lot of people seem to have been asking. Is there any relationship between the drilling, the geothermal drilling, and the current eruption of Lasso Fair Volcano? Not as far as I know. Um, I, I mean, I'd be surprised if it is, if there is a relationship, because the geothermal, I keep explaining that to people, geothermal um, drilling was, was sort of just breaking a very thin part of the, the, of the surface of the earth, while the volcano plumbing system goes deeper than that. And what's driving Sufre is much deeper, you know, you know 50, 60 kilometers, and probably as, as high, going from sort of ground level, five kilometers, all the way down to, um, 50 and 60 kilometers. The, the system is driving that. While the geothermal went to, I think, I think the longest well was a couple hundred meters, if that much. So it's, it's the outer thin skin. What's happening there was related to what Sufre does, not necessarily okay. the fact that we drilled on the side of it. Yeah, the history, as, as you know, is asking you. There's no evidence of it um, mm -hmm. that, that is related. A brief history. Okay, any similarities with the behavior of, um, say, 1979 or 71? Um, probably 71, 72, because 71, 72 was effusive. Um, the dome looks uh, morphologically and how it physically looks, um, how it's behaving. is quite similar to how 79 beha behaved. 71 came up in a lake, so it's, 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 its appearance and its interaction with the water made a difference. Different. The 79 dome grew similar to this one in an open crater with not very much water at the surface at least. So it looks pretty much like, the, like an old, if anybody was around in 79 or 80, if you went up there, and you, and you see it now, it looks pretty much similar. Except in 79, it came out in several lobes, almost like a star, and then it coalesced. This one is coming out from a single, probably a smaller point source of smaller fissure. So it's more concentrated in a particular area. So it's made a mound very fast, much more than in 79, which, which sort of came out as, as lobes. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's similar to previous domes, but until we get a sample, we won't really know for sure in terms of Ge petrologically the, name, the type of rock exactly what it compares with. Okay, when we come back we'll show some of the work or some of the things that you saw when you went up today and yes, uh, some video. You'll, you'll explain um, yep. what's happening. We'll be back in just a moment. C3 News updates, senior officials of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment ordered to quarantine for five days out of an abundance of caution. SVG records 49 active COVID-19 cases with 28 regarded as part of local clusters and two health workers amongst locals who have tested positive for COVID-19. And in your local sports, the NLA Premier and First Division's Cricket Championships to begin on January 16th. Regionally, Chris Gale headlines a plethora of West Indies stars, confirmed for next weekend's draft of the Pakistan Super League. Join us at 7 p.m. for these stories and more on the VC3 News Update. Welcome back. Well, we're going to be showing that video in a short while, but before we do, I'm going to take a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. How fast the message will get out if an eruption happens? Another one asks, so explosive eruptions are imminent? And I think there might be, 
the resource is going to find an evidence of a link, if any, between the drilling and the volcano activity. I think we answered that already. Mm -hmm. right. um, so we just go ahead with, with those two. Um, the speed at which the information gets out um, is as fast as we can get it out. Um, the, the thing is, we will be constantly updating the public about it, as we do now. Mm -hmm. um, and our, our intention is to ensure that the public are well informed about what is happening now and what are the possibilities. We could talk about that at some point. But it's possible, there is always a possibility, which is really the second thing about is there any ero an explosive eruption imminent. There's a lot of People need to understand there's a lot of what we call in this scientific jargon that people should also uncertainty. When you pick, when you get in your car and drive from home to work, you're not sure that you'll get to work, are you? you? There's a chance that you could get run over by somebody, you could get an accident. There's a lot of uncertainty that we, we live with, right? Mm -hmm. we, we understand that we live with it. But yet, when it comes to things like this, we want to be certain. I'm telling you, we are very uncertain about what, what will happen exactly. We can't be 100% sure that this will stay effusive or that it will go explosive or when it would go. What we do is that we try to keep as close an eye as possible on it so that if and when it goes, we can alert the authorities. But in their stead, what they also need to do and which they, they, they are trying to do is to make sure the population are informed and aware of what they should do if something happens so mm -hmm. that... Even if you don't get the message and you're in Chattabilla, you're in fancy, and you see something happen, given the information we are telling you, you should then be able to know, even if Nemo didn't come or, or Seismic didn't come or somebody didn't say that the volcano is erupting, you should know that, well, this sounds like something that I should, I should do A, B, or C. Mm -hmm. That's the stage we need to get at. We all need to get to the stage where we are aware of what the hazards are so we could take sensible decisions ourselves to move or not to move or to do whatever it is. And the authorities need to also do that. And they, 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 it's a constant work in progress. There's another question you asked about how, was it how? I think I... I don't think no one was answered. That, that that yeah. If right, any resource had right. gone into it, yeah, then... Yeah, I mean, the, my, my response, we answered that already. We but answered that, is, but the person is saying, no, we did not say where the resource has gone, yeah, gone but into the, that. The, right. So my response is that the critical thing, as I said, at this point in, in, in what's going on, is for us to put in improved instrumentation, improved the monitoring network, so we could keep, get a close eye on what's happening. There's a lot of science that will happen after. In fact, we're already being inundated at seismic. If people want to do all kinds of projects, but, yeah. mm -hmm. I will try to do them as much as possible. Somebody might come along and look at if there was, and they might find or not find something. At this present time for us, it's critical that we get instruments in and information about what's happening now, so we could alert the authorities and the public about what's happening, so they could take action. That to us is the emphasis, not that's connection between mm -hmm. things that, mm -hmm. what difference would it make yeah. at this point in time? I mean, that's, that's the perspective. Is it possible for magma to escape via the new holes? What new holes? No, no, I mean, that, I that, okay, maybe the video will show <laughs> you. Video, yeah. no but the, there was a spurious thing went around mm -hmm. that there was some new holes. There are areas on the flank of the volcano. If anybody goes up the volcano so often, you'll find that there's a lot of erosion, gully erosion that happens. There are places that slough off and it exposes the gray, very gray, dark gray ash that pre-existed. And there was a video that went around where mm -hmm. some of that was exposed and people saw that as a hole. There is no hole. I was there yesterday and I did not see any activity in the volcano other than around the dome, associated with the dome. Absolutely none. Okay. And we have video evidence for that. It's so. really weathering on landslides and Yes, there's normal and process. Yeah, normal it's not, processes. There's no yeah. holes. Yeah, no holes. There. The point is, we're going to talk about the history of Sufre. Sufre has erupted for the last 4,000 plus years from where it's been erupted now. You know, it's, it has not broken out on its side. It's not broken out in Chateaubriand or, or Ovi or Fancy. It's not broken out in, in Marco. It has a cone. It has always generally erupted from yeah, that, that central, either from the central area or right next to it. So in 1812, there's a little lip on the side that it erupted from. But since then, it's always from the center. One of the things we will be looking at is changes like that. So if we see that there is indeed a hole, we will alert people and we're not going to hide a hole. You can't after a while, you know, the volcano, I keep telling people the volcano will do as you do, irrelevant of what we do. I mean, what we have to do is make sure that we do what we do mm -hmm. to minimize the impact of this mm -hmm. volcano on us. Don't, don't worry, you know, so the, if there wasn't a hole, and if there was, I'm sure we will see it as soon as it comes out. 
That's one of the things we look at. We look at the videos all the time. It's not not this small team here alone in 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 um, in St. Vincent. We have a set of people in in Trinidad, the scientists. We have a set of people who are assisting us at the MVO in Montserrat, and they 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 look at the video. They look at the stills. There's one person who starts with looking at that and trying to come up with the volumes. And there are several that look. So when I actually saw that vid, when I saw that furious rumor, I had looked at the video and I, I went back and I looked at it, I zoomed in. I said, no, this is not true. And then I walked up the volcano and I said, it wasn't, it was what I thought. It was a gully, gully erosion. Mm -hmm. So there is no hope. Okay, um, guys, um, can you show us that video where um, Professor Robinson did some filming? So the, the video pans across from left to right on the volcano, and it shows you the dome. It gets to the current dome, and it would zoom in a little bit, and then it will continue around. As you see, the only area you have really steaming, apart from the dome itself, is the pre-existing femoral there that you have that's been around since 79. On the far end, you have the, the, the lake that there's still a little bit of water on it, and then we come back to the dome. If you notice, it grows, and there's a little bit of spillage at the bottom, and it, where it sort of bits break off, and fall out, and there's sometimes when a small bladder bit break off, it falls and it produces a little flow. You remember, it's sort of it has this sort of like lenticular blocks. See, there's a lot of blocks at the at the bottom. That's bits that spill off because as it grows from the center, it you, you notice it looks like it has sort of this this radial skin like mm -hmm. that's how it grows. So bits come out as a as a as a lent lenticular form, and it, it becomes solid. It forms a solid crust and it stops growing and the other bit behind it pushes it out of the way until it becomes on the edge, it becomes over steepened and the bits fall off. So you basically have cliff faces on the edge that then fall off and then expose bits and, and pieces. But that's, that's the dome, that's the dome as it, as it appeared yesterday. And that's, okay. you know, that's, that's as live as you can get in terms yeah. of what is happening um, at the volcano. And here we go again, right? So, and the rest of it, the, the other areas on the far end, you see the lavas. Remember, mm -hmm. Senator Sufre is made up, is a classic, what we call stratovolcano. It's made up of layers of lava flows. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the interesting things that in earlier worms of Sufre, sort of four, probably more than that, about 14,000 years ago, Sufre had more runny lavas. So you see all those, those cliffs on the side, those black things, those mm -hmm. are actually lava flows that went all the way sometimes to the coastline. Okay. But within recent times, sort of within the last, you know, four or five thousand years, certainly in historic periods, it's been more like that. The lava is more sticky, it doesn't get very far, and then the crater has become very big. So it's difficult for it, for it to get its lava flow outside of the crater. The dome will have to fill the entire crater, and then it will have to start spilling out. Um, and that will take a little while. And often what tends to happen is that it will eventually stop. Because as the material is coming out, you know, it's actually exerting pressure on the material that's below. So it stops it after a while it runs out of steam and then it sort of plugs it. And then the next thing that happens is that the pressure will probably build up enough that it then explodes. So it gets rid of that lava that was there, that, mark, mm -hmm. that dome that was oh. there before. So the dome is no more and then that's why you create the crater that you have. So it's a dynamic thing. Mm -hmm. It's always if you then extrude in as effusive or explosive. Um, material. Okay, I know there are plans to get um, some samples. Um, what kind of samples are you talking about and um, what do we expect to learn from, from those? Well, one of the things that we hope, you see this spillage at the, at the base there where you see some, some you know, on the, on the right hand side of the dome, the black area, it's sort of rounded and it's, it's, it's just a, a sheer edge and then there's split. We like mm -hmm. to go and grab one of those, um, of course. Oh. One of, the yeah, one of the challenges we have is that, hmm. you know, domes explode sometimes for no reason. And even if they don't explode, when, when a bit gets over steepness and spills down, when it spills off, the material breaks up. And when it breaks up, it loses its cool outer skin and the red hot interior gets exposed. You don't really want to be close to the dome when it does that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of risk to get in that in terms of a human person, a person, you know, person actually going and collect it. So one of the things we're trying to do is work with a helicopter with uh, some sort of um, long haul a cable that will mm -hmm. go in and, and scoop up a part and get a sample. What the sample will tell us, it will tell us a lot about the um, sort of geochemistry of the volcano, the geochemistry, sorry, of the, of the magma that is coming out. It tell us what kind of minerals and what kind of materials consist of. And it will help us to better understand why it's 
why it's operating as it is, whether whether it, it will give us some indication what is likely to be, or, or why it's being this effusive thing, or, or, or indication of if it looks like it, it might be something that could have enough gas in it that could be explosive. So it tells us a lot about the material that's coming out there, and by extension, what that material, how it could operate, how the how the how the, um, how the eruption could in, evolve. Um, so. If we get a sample, we'll do lots of tests on it and, and be in a better position to advise in terms of what, what direction the eruption is likely to be in. Okay. To go in, I should say, not be in. Okay. Someone is asking, how will air traffic in the region be affected with an explosive eruption? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's excellent. I mean, that's a key thing. In fact, I, to me, in terms of the regional impact of, of erupting volcanoes, that's the biggest one currently. Um, they will be impacted in a, in a, potentially in a really harsh way because ash, planes don't like to fly when ash is in the mm -hmm. atmosphere. And mm -hmm. usually the response of the aviation industry is that if there's ash in the atmosphere, the plane just simply okay. doesn't fly, it gets grounded. Mm -hmm. So ex erupting volcanoes, if volcanoes like ours that erupt explosively, they could cause aviation traffic to basically ground to a halt. Um, there's been, there's precedent to that. Uh, it, people must have heard of the Icelandic eruption a couple of years ago, which basically grounded aviation traffic towards Europe in a ma ma major way, and the implications of that, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, an explosive eruption for the region is not going to be a good thing right now. Okay, when we come back, um, we'll talk a little bit more about what plans are in effect should the need arise for evacuation. And someone, you could probably answer that when you get back as well, if the new dome attaching to the old dome as it grows, yeah? Back in a moment. On the VC3 News update, senior officials of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment ordered to quarantine for five days out of an abundance of caution. SVG records 49 active COVID-19 cases, with 28 regarded as part of local clusters. And two health workers amongst locals who have tested positive for COVID-19. And in your local sports, the NLA Premier and First Division's Cricket Championships to begin on January 16th. Regionally, Chris Gale headlines a plethora of West Indies stars, confirmed for next weekend's draft of the Pakistan Super League. Join us at 7pm for these stories and more on the VC3 News Update. Welcome back. So someone wants to know if the new dome attaching to the old dome as it grows. And there's someone who says, Professor, this must be a surreal experience for you. Did you cover the Sufra Hills uh, volcano? I seem to have lost that. But the question, yeah. if you covered it and what was your experience? Then, right. You know, so the, the first one about the new dome attaching to the old dome, um, if you think of it, it, it's not going to attach any more than it has already been attached. Um, for it to get up to the surface, it, it's passing between the pre-existing dome and the crater, crater wall. And deeper down, the material is actually more, more molten, more liquid-like. When it gets to the top, it's basically a solid, and all you're doing is essentially banking up a set of gravel next to another set of gravel. Essentially, that's what you're doing once it's at the surface. So I don't think it would adhere, like attaching like people are thinking. Mm. But deeper down below, I suspect there's a lot more adherence because the material is hotter, but it's still, uh, it's still able to, to, to move. Um, so I, I know people are beginning to wonder, what's the effect of the two of them growing next to each other? Is it somehow going to lead here. to something? Yeah. Not necessarily, because at the surface, mm -hmm. at the surface at least, it's. Basically, what you have is a mass of rock and a crater and a, 
uh, another molten material is oozing through. It's a bit like, it's a bit like if you had two big pieces of blocks, say, you know, when you're laying blocks and you, you, you have to put the soft mortar in between and you put the next brick in there and then mm -hmm. you squeeze it out. That's kind of what is happening. I mean, but in this case, it's not really squeezing out. It's being squeezed out from below. The, the driving forces from below. So I don't think the fact that that mechanism would necessarily affect it in the sense of making it explosive enough. What I was going to determine was explosive or what is, what it does is the nature of the material itself, uh, mm -hmm. um, which is why we want the, um, the sample on the reasons. The other question about Monstrat, yes, I was involved in Monstrat in 1995. I could, I could, I could tell many stories about that um, and my experience there. Um, I had just started to work at Seismic and then Monstrat. I started at Seismic in 93 and then Monstrat started in 95 and I was one of the persons that was there um, and continue to be there because we currently now have six, well, six members of staff based in Montreal. They're employed by Site Mixture Center, but they're based in Montreal because we mm -hmm. have a contract to run the Montreal Volcano okay. Observatory, which is, which is why when I speak about the team that is here, we have three persons here, but we have several people in Trinidad and also the colleagues in Montreal who are members of staff but managing Montreal. They're interested and we all discuss, we have a, a group that discuss things all the time. So in Montreal, it's a different kind of volcano. It's a different situation. Montserrat was very challenging because it's, it's like if Soufre, think of it, if Soufre, instead of being where it is, mm -hmm. Soufre was where Monk St. Andrew is. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And think of if Soufre starts erupting, what impact, and it starts erupting explosively, what the impact that would have in Kingston and the largely populated areas. The largest densely populated areas in Trinidad in, 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 is in the south. Mm -hmm. And then you have a bulk in the middle of it. So that's what happened in Montreal. So it was difficult to manage because people were people essentially living on it, the main population. So managing your response is in that case is very challenging. It's a small, smaller land space to manage. There wasn't the northern part where people weren't living, wasn't well developed. So in terms of moving people, you know, now Nemo could think of moving people to the south. We have mm -hmm. most of the house in the south. And they could think of challenges with that, but mm -hmm. still it's much more doable than they would have been able to do in Montserrat. So it was much more challenging scientifically. It was very interesting. Um, but then I, I, the, the reason I got into, I, I assume everybody in Simmons know that now, but the reason I got into this sort of quote unquote business is because of 79. I, I was a, a, a cadet and I was mm -hmm. a, a sixth former in, in, in Simmons in 79 and mm -hmm. we saw Sufra erupting. So that's why I got into this, this business. It was good to apply it in Montserrat. And it's, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's like, it's a circle. Yeah, 41 you know? years yes, later, Yes, I'm, I'm doing it in yeah, <laughs> St. Vincent. Yes. For the precise reason I did it in the first place, yeah, right? Yeah. So, you know, I probably justify the investment of mm -hmm. St. Vincent in my education. Yeah, you know, so. yeah, and we are proud of you, you know that. <laughs> so, some quick questions. Should families begin to store water in the event sulfur gets in the water systems? Um, somebody else wants to know. I think know. we're far from that yet. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, trade winds 19, 2019 and Nemo exercise of volcanic eruption mm -hmm. in 2019. Okay, I think I get what the person is saying. How sensitized are persons and how prepared is Nemo? Are the Nemo mechanisms to evacuate persons mm -hmm. and secure the red zone? Well, the Nemo ones. <laughs> 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 but I think what the person was suggesting is that somehow because we had this simulation in 2009, yeah. we, we sort of bring right, some sort yeah. of bad mouth on ourselves. Right. Right. No, it's no, it's we, good that you did. No, we know that really when we, we saw this threat that the volcanic eruption can happen. We, some of us were hoping that it doesn't happen in our lifetime, lifetime again. But certainly because of the, <coughs> the science around La Soufre, we knew at certain, at some time, it's a really erupt. And we wanted it's a it can be a forgotten hazard as you get further away from the last eruption 41 years old 41 years uh, ago how many persons were around that time so you you tend to lose some of the memory of the eruption and really in terms of sensitization we have been sensitizing the the all the zones for quite a lot for a number of years working with the seismic research center over 10 years so the sensi the sensitization is really has been at, at a very high level and now we're at the, at the stage where we have to plan for an evacuation 
if it comes to that. And this is where now we, we tested the plan in 2019. We know what went well and what didn't go too well. And the, it's really has to be driven also at the community level, not just at the national level, but also at the community level. So it's have spent quite some time under the Volcano Ready Community Project over the years and working with the communities for them to really increase their readiness. So at the community level, we have mapped the vulnerable populations where they are, persons who would need help in evacuating if needed, maybe have mobility issues. We have asked the communities now also to identify persons or families who have somewhere else they can go other than a public shelter. You may have a brother, sister in the, in, the, in the safe zone where you can stay with, so that we have a better idea. We know it's approximately 16,000 um, persons according to the last census, but that may be more because persons can be, if you're living in even some parts of the country in the yellow zone, when you start to see the ash fall and you start to see, feel the, the sand on your, listen to the, the pebbles or the small stones on your roof, it can be very uncomfortable. So we may have more persons evacuating. So we want persons as, as individual families living especially in the red zone because we need to evacuate above the Rabaka River in the event of a, of a, a possible expo, explosive eruption because if they are lava flows, if they are pyroclastic flows, they are coming down these same rivers and you will not be able to pass once that flow happens. So our sensitization has been high. We are planning now with the um, continental evacuation planning in terms of ensuring that all government vehicles are ready. The list of vehicles of all government agencies are ready. The vehicles within the communities, we have that, we have that um, resource also that those vehicles will be able to evacuate persons. So we know right up front, okay, 500, approximately 500 persons in Fancy. We have 26 vehicles. How many vehicles we need to, set, to send to, to Fancy to evacuate the rest persons? So we're getting right down to that level to how many persons will need that support in evacuating, where the persons are going to go, whether you're going to take the persons in Fancy to Calico, for example, or you're taking those in Sandy Bay to, to Mespo, to Greggs, you know, Richland Park, those areas we want. That is what we're now ensuring that that is fine-tuned in terms of the eva evacuation planning. But it begins with each family and each individual living within the red and the orange zone to start putting things in place in now. Place and they will take the initiative. Someone wants to know what is the approximate density and mass of material that forms the dome? Does it have the potential to eventually threaten the stability of the crater slopes or the walls of the existing dome? Yeah. Okay, um, the simple answer is that we don't know currently unless we, until we get a, a piece of the dome. Those are some of the information we have, the density and mass. But in terms of stability of the crater walls um i mean that's that's that would be a concern that we would have when it starts abutting against the crater walls and sort of growing there I, i'd mm -hmm. be given what i know of the souffre and the, the way in which is built up of layers um while it's a possibility I, I think there are other sort of more likely things to happen in terms of of, of that one of the only instruments we like to use and we like to put on the crater wall is actually some reflectors um these are these are things that would reflect back a signal, and then we'd probably stay somewhere away from the flank um, and, then, and then measure the distance to that reflector. And that will tell us, you know, if the wall is being compromised, because we'll expect before it sort of fails, if it's going to fail, that we'll see some changes in that line length. Um, okay. it's, it's, it's using something that's called an electronic distance meter. So that's, that's one of the other instruments we'd use. We essentially, if the, if the wall, if the, the particular wall that looks like it might be compromised, we'll start measuring the length to it. Um, so those are all planned. Okay, Richie, there's someone on the line? Okay, so, good night. What's the protocol for disadvantaged and vulnerable grouping? Um, somebody also wants to know when the Sufre do erupt, would both domes explode or the new one? So those are two questions there for you. There's another. Um, would rain have any effect on the eruption or flow? Mm -hmm. Somebody else wants to know why are the trees on the ridge line mm -hmm. towards Chateau Blair being dried up? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. Yeah. Lots of questions here. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Michelle, you could deal with the, the advantage. Uh, the advantage. And uh, normally, in in an, in, a, in evacuation um, procedures elderly person, disabled, disadvantaged persons, children 
women and children, I, I would be some of the first persons to, to evacuate. So in terms of the protocol, that will be, and that, that, that happened in 1979, and that will continue in, if, if, there's a, if there's such an eruption. So that um, protocol will, will still remain in effect to house those uh, families. We, we will want to have families staying together. So if, 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 a, if, a, if an elderly person is being evacuated, their family, family network will be evacuated with them. So that's the general pro protocol for persons with disabilities and, and other physically challenged. Um, so let me take at least some of the science questions. They mm -hmm. asked about whether mm -hmm. the, the dome will be destroyed if you have an explosive eruption. Yes, it's, it's, it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's probably likely. If there's an explosive eruption, basically everything that is up there could become compromised and be part of the explosion. It, it basically fragments everything, including the old and new dome. Um, really, it depends on the scale of the eruption, how big is the eruption, how much of the dome is destroyed. So for his pattern of eruption is that it has an effusive eruption and an explosive eruption. You don't know whether one follows the other, the other follows the other. But the point is that when it explodes, it gets rid of anything that is up there, generally speaking. So yes, the old dome and the new dome could go. Um, I can't remember all the question, but yeah. one, of the, one person asks about the vegetation. Yeah. One, of the things, yeah. one of the key things that come out of the volcano, which is one of the reasons we tell people to avoid the crater, mm -hmm. is a lot of sulfur. Mm -hmm. and some dilute um, acids. Um, uh, you, you, have hyd uh, you, you have hydrogen sulfide, you have sulfur dioxide, mm -hmm. then you have various hyd hydrochloric products like hydrogen chloride, hydrogen fluoride, and all of these, when they mix the water, become acidic. acidic. Mm -hmm. And essentially, that's what's happening. The, 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 the gas is, to a large extent, burning the vegetation. We'd expect that burn, that, that damage, to extend further field as the amount of gas comes out, as a plume, and that could happen. The amount of gas that's coming in is actually very, what scientists will say, is a weak plume. It's not very much gas that's coming out. Mm. It's not very steady. But as it comes out, it's actually hugging the valley. It's going down the valley. And as it goes down the valley, it's going to destroy more and more of the vegetation. Is that a brown patch mm -hmm. piece, Pussy? I wouldn't be surprised if it just extends further and further down that valley where the wind is leading it into. That's, that's it's normal. Somebody was asking, and if I ask that, how long will it take the volcano to overflow? Based well, on yeah, the I mean, it, 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 it depends on the rate. We're yeah. not really sure, Good. and that's one of the things we've been monitoring for. One of, the, one of the reasons that we're monitoring for the rate of growth is to try to estimate how long it will take, essentially, to overcome the, the crater. I'd be surprised if it does that before us knowing it does that, because we're looking at it so closely. Mm -hmm. So we know. And, and once we know, we then be able to know which side it will overflow, and therefore, you know, which side might start having stuff spilling over um, long before it does that. Um, so we don't know how, how long now, but we hope to, we monitor that. Okay, so there's another question. Can an explosive eruption lead to Kikam Jenny okay. erupting? Simply, no, they're no, not connected. They're not the connected volcanoes are related to each other. They're not connected directly, so they operate independently, independent sources, okay. but driven by the same process. All right, so somebody's asking a question for Professor Robertson. Last of first history shows a major eruption every 100 years. Mm -hmm. If the volcano experiences an explosive eruption, in got away from me. Mm -hmm. 1979. People try to play this thing with numbers. Yeah, Let me yeah, tell them something. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I don't yeah. know exactly mm -hmm. what they would ask, but does the close been, does the close proximity between eruptions no, translate it, it, to a small eruption? Right. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All mm -hmm. right. So Sufra has been erupting uh, for the uh, Sufra is a little over a million years old, right? If you look at the rocks. And we have only been studying it, and we only have detailed information about it, say, for the last 4,000 plus years, um, in terms of knowing how often it erupts explosively. And the reason we now know, know that is because when it erupts explosively, it burns the vegetation, creates charcoal, which we then date. Mm -hmm. And then we have to find the charcoal. So in a sense, what we have is a minimal record of what Sufra has been doing. And then to base upon that, this what we say, what we know for sure is that every 100 years you've had one eruption, plus or minus a couple, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 years, right? We're uncertain exactly how. So the fact that you had one in 1979 doesn't mean that you have to wait another 100 years. It could have happened as it does now, no. right? Mm -hmm. And also we don't know how much, this is explosive eruptions, eh? Mm -hmm. We have never known how much effusive eruptions you have because every time you have an explosive eruption, it destroys everything. So you don't have the evidence of the effusive eruption. It's destroyed. So it could have had much more effusive eruptions mm -hmm. than we thought. It's just that the last set of explosive ones have destroyed them, so we don't, we don't see any evidence. So to pick up on that, I'm telling people, it's a good thing to look at the statistics, but we don't have sufficient data to come up with something firm like that. Secondly, the fact that, so 
first of all, the period, the city that is seen, the, the, the sort of pattern they're seeing, might be inaccurate because the record is poor. Secondly, to base up that and then say that because it's shorter, it's smaller, is even mm -hmm. more no, pure. I so I, would, I wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, I, I hear where they're coming from, but I wouldn't put too much um, worry on that. Okay, mm -hmm. well, I'm getting a signal from the guys, guys in the back that the we've gone over time, but we just can't help it. Um, we've got to get you guys back in here. This is an ongoing situation. Lots more information that we can have. People have a lot of questions. We thank you for coming, and we'll see you again sometime. It might well be next week. Thank you very much, <laughs> Professor Richardson, thank you. Richard thank Robinson, you and Director of NEMO, Michelle Forbes. Thank you both. Thank thank you. Have yeah. a good evening. That's the program for today. Good evening. Thank you.